Well, Mexico today put out a $2 million bounty on some of the country's deadliest drug cartel leaders. The move comes as the Obama administration is preparing to help Mexico fight those de deadly drug wars. These new plans by the Mexican government include redeploying uh, federal agents to the border by the U.S. government, I should say, uh, but no military. Casey Wyan tonight reporting from the U.S.-Mexico border near San Diego. The Mexican government says it has captured the man suspected of orchestrating a grenade attack on a U.S. consulate last fall. He's an alleged drug cartel hitman known as the Big Marble. He was also the mastermind behind the torture and killing of nine soldiers, part of the 7th Army Regional Command in Monterey, Nuevo Leon, that took place October 22, 2008. As Mexican President Felipe Calderon praised his army for capturing the suspect, the Mexican Navy helped the U.S. Coast Guard seize eight tons of marijuana in the waters off Baja, California. Despite those signs of cooperation, tensions are rising between the United States and Mexico. Some American lawmakers and the governor of Texas want President Obama to deploy the military to the Mexican border to stop drug cartel violence from spreading across. I think the situation is becoming so chronic that um, the administration doesn't have time to try to play it safe. And this argument of, well, we want time to look at it. Um, look, the people in Mexico are fighting for their sovereignty right now, and sometimes um, doing the safe thing is not the right thing to do with Mexico. If Calderon's brave enough to do the right thing, I'd call on both the, the Secretary of Homeland Security and especially the President to step forward and do the right thing, even if it, it, it uh, looks politically risky. The Mexican government is opposed to the United States moving troops to the border. It continues to accuse its northern neighbor of helping to fuel the drug war by not doing more to stop drug use and weapons trafficking. It's a view the Obama administration echoes. Number one is to support uh, President Calderon. One of the ways we can do that is to recognize that a lot of this violence is fueled by um, guns and cash that's coming from the United States. Mexico has also retaliated against a U.S. decision to halt a cross-border trucking program by imposing tariffs on more than $2 billion in U.S. exports. Against this backdrop, Secretary of State Hillary Clinton this week will visit Monterrey, Mexico, the site of last year's consulate attack in an effort to ease those tensions. She will be followed by Attorney General Eric Holder, Homeland Security Secretary Janet Napolitano, and then next month by President Barack Obama. Meanwhile, Napolitano has sent one of her senior aides for a tour of various cities along the U.S.-Mexico border. A spokeswoman says the reason for that tour Lou, is to get a better understanding of what's happening at the border. Well, she was, for crying out loud, governor of Arizona. Maybe she could just send out a memo. What do you think? Yeah, it, it's hard to see what kind of information they they uh, uh, would glean from this tour that's not already yeah. public and that our broadcast has not reported on dozens and dozens of times. The situation is very violent just across the border. The violence continues to spread to the United States, to more cities. The Mexican government does not have control of large portions of the We could just catalog our reporting here over the last... The we could just States. catalog our reporting here over the last several years and help them out. Uh, I, I mean, this is lamentable. Uh, uh, and silly on the part, uh, particularly, of Janet Napolitano, the Secretary of Homeland Security. Uh, thank you very much. Appreciate it, Casey, as always. Casey Wyan from the border. Well, Mexico is not only blaming the United States for drug violence, uh, but now it's also uh, punishing us on trade. Mexico has decided to retaliate for the cancellation of the cross-border trucking pilot program, which allowed some Mexican trucks unlimited access across uh, our roads. Mexico is saying we violated the terms of the North American Free Trade Agreement. Let's put this thing into context because this is something you don't hear uh, anywhere but here. The United States represents exactly 84% of the total production of NAFTA. That's right, we're just about 90% of that. Mexico is 7%. Uh, Can well, Canada, about 9%. And the fact is uh, that we are treating Canada and Mexico as equal partners in an enterprise in which we have nine-tenths ownership. NAFTA has a system to resolve disputes with uh, all three countries, of course, being treated equally. But 90% uh, should give the United States some at least leverage, one uh, would think, but uh, we don't use it when it comes to cross-border issues. Mexico has placed tariffs on 89 American-made products. Now, to tell you how dumb the government of Mexico is, this country buys 85% of all of Mexico's exports. 
if the Mexican government uh, doesn't uh, wise up and isn't smart enough to figure this out, can they be smart enough to defeat their flourishing drug cartels? Up next, Treasury Secretary Geithner under fire, new calls for his resignation, what it means for the Obama administration. Three of the country's best political and economic thinkers join me next. We'll be right back. Stay with us.